This is tonight. I'm Bruce Whitfield and this is Joey. Joey is a horse. Well, he's like a horse, isn't he? He's made of cane and he's made of fabric and he's made of the most extraordinary gearing that has ever been seen on a stage anywhere in the world. He's the superstar hero of War Horse, which is a stage show which has gone across five continents, most recently in Johannesburg. And over the holiday season, Joey over here is going to be at the Artscape in Cape Town. He's absolutely magnificent. He, how tall is he, Adrian? He's about, he's bit, what? He's 10 hands? Yeah. More big, 16 hands? Yeah, but yeah, like that. Well, there we go. <laughs> did, did you grow up with horses? I didn't grow up. I grew up, I rode my, my grandfather's horses, but I didn't measure my hands at that point. Um, Joey's actually a bit bigger than a real horse because the manipulators that work him have to be inside. Now, Adrian Kohler is the designer of Joey. He is um, the artistic director at the Handspring Puppet Company, which is a Cork Bay-based business, which has become world famous. For the last 30 years, they've toured the stages of the world doing puppetry. But what they've done with War Horse is make puppetry mainstream once again. It's a Victorian thing, isn't puppetry? Well, it's much more ancient than that. Really? It's, it's one of the oldest forms of theatre. The, uh, puppet traditions exist in just about every single country in the world. Um, some very unique in, in West Africa. There's an ancient tradition in Japan. There's an ancient tradition in China. So um, it, it, it might have become a Punch and Judy show in the Victorian yeah. era, but uh, before that it had a grand heritage. Well, what is it about puppetry that makes us believe? Because I've seen the show and I've seen this horse live and breathe and snort and twitch away flies. Basil Jones, um, um, you're the producer of, it's, of this. Um, I think about puppetry, it's, it's the struggle to live uh, that, that audiences really respond to. The fact that there are people struggling to make an object, this is in some sense an object, yeah. Um, come to life and I think we all understand the kind of epic nature of that struggle in our own personal lives when you when you doing little small things in your n daily life you they feel like a struggle to you and when you see people on stage struggling very successfully hopefully to make something come alive people empathize with that very strongly but also the audience loves to use their imagination yeah. your imagination sitting there in the audience is is has to come into play when you watch a puppet piece. You have to fill in all the gaps that aren't there. You, you have to work at it. I mean, I recall watching the show for the first time. I was lucky enough to see it in the West End, four rows from the front, and starting off by watching the technical aspects of it, where you've got three people. You've got one person at the head leading the, the, the puppet around, leading Joey around the stage. You've got two people bent over inside, yeah. manipulating legs, yeah. manipulating the body of Joey. And five, maybe ten minutes in, they've gone. They've disappeared because mm. you bike so completely into what is a piece of cane furniture. I think that audiences love feeling their imaginations work um, and work so successfully. Audiences love to see that there are ten legs, but they're only seeing four. Um, Were there ten legs? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> they're ten legs. Um, so I, I think they, they, they love to see their own imaginations at work, feel that imagination working for them um, to the, make it. And the puppeteers inside the horse are, of course, anonymous. They are trained to be anonymous. Do they make it into the program? They make it, they make it into the okay. program, no problem. But nobody recognizes them when they come out the, yeah. the stage door because the audience have only seen the horse. And that is a, a big sacrifice that the three of them make each night. Um, to, to pull the imagination out of the audience. He weighs, what, 37 kilograms? Yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Plus, plus the 60 or 70 kilograms of the, of the cavalry officer who m rides him. Absolutely. So you, you've got to be able to carry 100 kilograms between three of you for a three-hour period. That must be an, a, an exercise of extraordinary endurance for the individuals. Who The guy at the head's got the easy job. Yeah. Um, he's running around. They're running around bent over double. Yeah. I mean, take yeah. me through that process. Well, it's two weeks uh, at the beginning learning how to be a horse, how to think like a horse, and how to get the strength for a horse. Um, and strength, of course, is a really important part of it. So there's a lot of exercises that they do, uh, weights and uh, yoga. Um, but of course, it's more than just that. It's, it's about the voice of the horse. Uh, so there are three people who are creating that voice. I might start the sound, Adrian would continue, and you would finish it if we were the three yeah. manipulating it. Um, so they have to not only be strong, but they've got to learn how to think 
uh, as one. It's, it's kind of what we call it group mind. But it's the ultimate in choreography. I mean, it's hard enough getting a chorus to do the same thing, but you actually, you can't see each other. You can't, you've got to read each other's movements. Well, the movements. three people inside, of course, have to first be actors. They've, it is an acting job inside of the horse, but they have to think as one actor. They have to think as one creature and they can't talk to one another inside the horse because they've got microphones on to make the horse sounds. So it is all instinctual once they get to know one another very well. They, they can tell if the person in the hind position wants the horse to move sideways, um, twist his back and everybody else can feel it because they're connected uh, physically inside the horse. Now, you guys have operated out of Cork Bay. It's a lovely, can I call it sleepy? beautiful fishing village on False Bay, close to the most southern point of the world. Yeah. This has made you world famous. How does it feel after 30 years of sweating your art at festivals? Well, it's very gratifying in the sense that the, the art of puppetry is, uh, is growing in stature now because of shows like War Horse and The Lion King and others. Uh, it means that younger people who are training as actors don't mind adding puppetry to their skills as an actor. When we started, that wasn't the case. Um, you know, puppetry was the kind of uh, poor sister of the mm -hmm. theatre. Um, and now it's in the mainstream, as you said in the introduction. It's in the centre of a big show in London and around the world. I think people are beginning to realise what the offer is of puppetry. Um, and certainly with this, um, the offer is a, a live animal on stage as part of our lives. Um, theatre really has been, there's been absence of animals in theatre, yet animals are very much part of our lives. And this uh, moment in the, at the end of the First World War is the moment when we sort of parted ways with horses. So many were killed. And it was just at the moment when cars and motorization of uh, farming equipment was happening. Um, it, it was the end of a 10,000 year relationship with the horse. And I think that people feel a great nostalgia uh, for that relationship. No, these poor animals were brutalized. These poor animals, these puppets. Yeah. <laughs> these were, but animals were brutalized in World War I in a way that had never been seen before. There had been yeah. cavalry animals in the past. But take me through the technology here, please, mm. if you would, Adrian. I mean, let's get, let's, let's get his ears moving. There's a little trust up here, but uh, yeah. uh, the ears yeah. oh, are good. Oh, hey, flies. Yes, there we go. Okay. Uh, the ears are controlled by these bicycle brake cables and the levers of the head manipulator. Don't destroy control. the magic. Don't destroy the magic by saying bicycle brake cables. Bicycle brake. No, Basil, take a step back. Take a step back. I want to see Joey's legs. Bicycle brake cables are very useful. And here um, is a. You'll, you'll notice when I pull this lever, the hoof curls up. Yes. Um, in a in a horse-like way. Did you have to become Leonardo da Vinci well, um, you as you as you built the horse? Because Leonardo was terribly good at an anatomical drawing. Yeah, now I phoned him up and he said, "This is what you do." <laughs> <laughs> but the structure um, you've used cane, and people yeah. have used cane in furniture manufacture for centuries as well. Did it take a long time to come up with the concept, or did you know it I've, intrinsically? I've, I've used cane since I was at art school. It's a very light material. It you soak it, you bend it, and you mold it, and it stays in shape. But it's it's flexible and it's light and it's uh, you know it's 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 uh, plastics uh, plastics are, are heavy compared to cane it's it's durable it does break of course yeah and you have to replace some of the parts um, but it's really a wonderful material but this has got to take a, sev a 70 kilogram man on the back it's got to be manipulated internally well inside is a aluminium bridge okay. there's a bridge between the two people the, the backpacks of which they're wearing bolt onto the bridge in these rails here and uh, so underneath the cane structure is, a, is a something really solid um, and that's the heaviest part of the horse. How do you make, do I make, uh, do I believe this or do you make me believe him? Because I saw him breathe. I was yeah. convinced he breathed. Yeah. Uh, breath actually is a really important part of everything we do yeah. and we, we do breathe the horse. The horse do, does yes. move. But the breath, instead of uh, the horse body doing that, which is what the lungs would normally do, yes. Uh, Adrian realized that from an audience point of view, you'd never be able to see that. So he made the horse breathe up and down. Yeah. And so we can see that. And, and I think one of the things that we have to believe is that you can see the breath, even if it's that much, from the very back of an auditorium. If you, you trust overdo, that, you can't if, overdo it. For you the front, can't overdo can that. It's the, the received idea about theater has got to be big. Yes. But I think what, what Handspring is saying is it can be small 
and the audience will still see it. And the smallness, the detail of this uh, manipulation is actually where the magic lies. What next then for Handspring? Because here you are, you've got this wonderful yeah. global opportunity. Yeah. Should you choose to exploit it? Yeah. Or are you happy in Cork Bay? We're very happy in Cork Bay. Um, we, we, we wish the phone would stop ringing. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, we're both phoning. <laughs> um, we, you know, it, it, it's not a good idea to talk about your next project uh, before it's, right. it's on, 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 like on the Like you don't mention that play that people yeah, don't mention. Yeah, you know, it's pl that, those plays usually don't ever make it beyond the, the discussion phase. So we, we'll keep quiet, but it's not like we're going to sleep. No, but, but you're also involved in lots of charity work as well. And I think, I mean, puppets must be such a useful mechanism to deliver messages um, for, because, because of the way we relate to them. We, um, don't, we don't really believe in uh, instrumentalized theatre or message theatre. No. Um, we, but we, we love to uh, give the, the medium of puppetry to people as a, as a tool that they can use for themselves. Um, so that's really what we do. We, we introduce it. Um, to people who might not come into contact with it either, uh, otherwise. What's the Barrydale project? What does that do? Oh, we, 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 we're involved with a, a, a community uh, activist group called Net for Pret in the Smithsville side of Barrydale in the Little Karoo. That's uh, just for fun. Yeah. Yeah. Net and for Pret, yes. Net for Pret, and, and it's, a, it's a kind of holiday activity group, but every year there's a big festival on the Day of Reconciliation, which is 16th of December, and, uh, and we've become involved in the, in the in the making of puppets for a large parade, which turns into a performance from both sides of the town meet at a school on the border, and there's a performance of reconciliation. Uh, but, but puppetry, one, one looks at it, one looks at festivals around the world, one looks at carnivals. Puppetry yeah. is instrumental. Yeah. Um, and it is, it's about, it's about celebrating life, I suppose. Yeah, and, and you, you can play with scale, you can play with gravity, you can play with humor, uh, you can play with many things which an actor can't really do. What happens to Joey now? I mean, this is, this is the original prototype Joey. This, this is this Joey is, this 1. No, this is, this is quite an advanced Joey. The, 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 the Joey 1 doesn't exist anymore. It collapsed in a heap of tired <laughs> cane. <laughs> um, in fact, they require quite a lot of maintenance on, on, uh, on, during the run. Uh, there's a group of technicians backstage who put spare legs on when they need it and spare heads even. Um, so yeah, when we make a, when we make a joey, uh, we don't just make a horse with four legs. We make a horse with eight legs, two heads, and two necks. Because during the show, if anything has to go wrong, we've got to be able to clip on a new head or a new leg uh, so that um, the audience isn't aware of it. So we have people on duty every night, uh, dressed in black with uh, tools around their waists, who kind of can ninja onto stage <laughs> and quietly uh, replace a, a leg if, if necessary. Are you looking forward to going back to the quiet old days of pre-Joey? Uh, well, you know, that'll never happen, I'm afraid. Uh, Joey has changed it all for us. Um, but we are looking... We are, we, are, we, are, we are looking closer to home, shall we say. <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful story, and it's the story of the Handspring Puppet Company out of Cork Bay in Cape Town, and they've been busy. They've done this for years, but you've only really heard about them recently because of this guy, Joey Mark, whatever Joey is. He's very real, he's lovely. And if you haven't seen the show yet, and you are in Cape Town on your holidays and you can still get tickets, please do, because it's absolutely awesome. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Nice to see you both, and thanks for introducing me to Joey. Thank, thank you, Bruce. Bruce.